we want you to MC on stage with as a grimer, shotter, shabba, skibber. I think you just, you always need to start somewhere and just grow with it. Um, because obviously things just come over time. In that time, I also had a car accident, which I should be dead. And I was so lucky. And I remember uh, my family thought I was dead because I was on the side of the road with the white sort of cloth over me. Right, now I am going to do this and I'm going to keep going. And then I was so lucky. I mean, I ended up on tours with Skibber and Shabba and Shotter and... I remember running out onto the stage and I remember running out and being like, wow, there was thousands and thousands of people there. I got really, really ill and I, I was off work for two years. They didn't know what was wrong with me. The doctor did not know what was wrong and I couldn't do anything. I couldn't go, I, my life just stopped. Welcome back to another Rave Room podcast and today I've got Miss Melody. Thank you very much for giving me your time and coming on the show. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for having me. So where I'll start with all my guests is going back, 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 way, way back. Where did it all start and your inspirations to become an MC and into drum and bass? Well, <laughs> actually it started when I was in high school um, and my mates used to have tape packs right. and uh, we used to like swap tape packs and tapes so obviously in the tape packs you'd get like the the Andy C's and the hype speed you know tapes that you'd listen to first yeah. <laughs> I yeah. don't know for anyone else and then it just grew from there really um I I remember hearing it was Accelerate Culture 14 Andy C one side hype on the other and I think oh, it was Skibber Shabba and then on the other side it was Debt Fearless and I think there was someone else but that for me was where it all started from yeah. um and then as i got a bit older I, well, and then i just started writing lyrics really i was just like but it was more garage like garage was really massive at that time drum and bass was still very underground yeah you didn't really hear it on the radio unless you were in london sort of tuned into like Paul fm at the time um where they did super sunday um and that there was no digital radio there was nothing like that you literally had to wait if you, i wasn't obviously old enough to go to the raves i was like 15 so obviously you had to be 18 to get into raves um and then yeah you, you literally had to wait for the tape pack to get to get out um so then you'd be going to your local record shop you know and then <laughs> you'd just be waiting for that tape pack to come out um and and then you'd be listening to like all the new tunes um and oh what this tune that tune and you know and then obviously mcs with the lyrics and lyrical sort of side so back then i was more writing garagey lyrics because i don't know it was just more not bigger but it was i was in between so yeah you know and then i sort of evolved and i started going i met a dj when i was 17 and i walked into um, a corner shop and he was working um, and he was like, and I said to him, oh, he said something about, oh, you're going to come to this drum and bass event. And I was like, yeah, all right then, blah, blah, blah. Um, and they, they were like a little crew at the time, sort of locally where I am. And they started putting on events, like just on a Thursday night, but it'd be rammed. Um, yeah. And then they'd start getting sort of like Fat Man, Shortston, um, and other sort of, uh, at the time, Fluid, who was running New Nation, at One Nation. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they sort of just done events and then i started mc like writing drum and bass lyrics and i started just hosting the parties with other mcs five over we had down um and and you know other people so then i just sort of just started really getting into it and then i started getting booked all over the uk um then i started doing so the first ever rave i did was at brixton academy and it wow. was a bit of a free <laughs> it was a bit of a free-for-all um, I wasn't booked on the event, like, as such. Yeah. But I saw my mate was like, yeah, could just come, just turn up. And there was, like, Kasha. There was, like, some old school sort of MCs on the mic, like, Room 2 One Nation MCs and DJs coming through. Yeah. Um, and sort of, I, I remember it really well. So we sort of walked up the stairs and it was just ramo. And then I remember the mic just getting passed around. And then it was my turn. But it always come back to me, which was wicked. And then you're doing back to backs and things like that. Um, and then it just sort of just started from there, really. Um, then I was doing like Southampton, London. 
up north, Wales, like everywhere. So it kind of kicked um, off pretty good then, yeah? Yeah. I yeah, mean, it was really good. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was just sort of every weekend in different places, um, different people, different raves, um, and then started to get to know a few of the artists because obviously my mates were booking them through their events. Yeah. Um, and then sort of seeing them at raves and stuff was cool. Do you know what I mean? So and yeah. I, I was only, what, just 18. So I was still very young and I was sort of like, it was very inspiring to me, do you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. that's when I knew this is what I want to sort of do. But as you get older, um, obviously they didn't pay hardly anything at the time. No. So you had to have a job. And I was working in a hotel doing 70 hours a week. And at the weekend I'd be going to like I'd be for bookings and stuff and having to fly back and work another 70 hours um, and, and doing stuff like that. And then what happened was I got really, really ill and I, I was off work for two years. They didn't know what was wrong with me. The doctors did not know what was wrong. And yeah, sorry it was sort that. of infuriating yeah. because it was like, well, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't go. I, my life just stopped. So I was just writing, 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 just trying to take my mind off stuff. And then um, I went back to the hotel and I just didn't like it. It changed. In two years, all the staff had gone. It was all different and I just come away from it and I sort of, I got really upset by it because I was like, well, what am I going to do now with my life? Because because obviously that was for about five years. At the weekends, I'd go and play at raves and literally if, you know, and even weekends I'd work. So I'd finish work and if I had a night off, I'd make sure I'd get it off to go obviously to these bookings. Um, And then it was like, well, where do I go now? What do I do? Mm -hmm. And then I sort of just said to myself, right. I started, my mates was like, they started an access to music in Brighton, which is about sort of like 45 minutes from me. Um, and I, you know, mates were saying to me, you want to get on this course? Like it will, you know, it will help, blah, 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 blah. So I got myself enrolled on that. Um, and I met some really cool artists on there. Um, and one of my tutors was like, Jimmy, he produced um, Eric Clapton um, and oh, like nice. that. Big, um, big people, a massive attack. Yeah, um, yeah. He, you know, so I was really inspired by their what they'd done as well. Um, and it, within that time, I sort of learned like production, um, how to like because at the time as well, I started doing my own event, drum and bass event. Yep. Um, and yeah, they just everything. So, and then a mate of mine was on like the, not the year above, like in the course, but he'd already done a year. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm sort because going to Brighton was a, it was like going to London. So you don't know anyone. Do you know yeah, what I mean? It's like yeah. it was all fresh and all new again. So I, he said to me, I'm, I'm putting on this rave. Do you want to MC it? Because on my break, we used to have like this. It wasn't like a hall or anything, but it was like a studio room, but massive. And I yep. used to go in there, set the mic up, and do little like freestyles and videos. And at the time, Facebook and stuff like was just sort of kicking well not kicking off but sort of booming with that sort of thing around like um, 2000 this was around yeah sorry go on. And 14 15, okay yeah uh 2013 yeah about 2013 yeah about yeah 10 11 years ago and uh on, which I, on my breaks I used to like mc and do little videos and put them on my socials and stuff like that and then uh yeah basically i just started then things sort of started going to the next level with going to perform at raves and you know doing stuff like that really so that's really how it all started to click into place yeah, yeah. um and then i could sort of just do that i i done three years of that and literally at the weekends all i was doing was just i you know just gigging doing gigs. yeah wow yeah. that's that's a crazy story but especially with the 70 hour work week i mean and sorry to you got ill and that i'm glad you're doing well and that you're a lot you're you know fighting fit now um but yeah i think like even for me like my my missus i went through some health stuff and and um it kind of when you go through that it, i mean obviously if you're in a job sometimes you love it for the people and things like that and yeah but when you go through something like that i mean i haven't myself but obviously through my missus you kind of look at life a little bit different and you think there's more to life than something working 70 hours a week and 100%. you, you know what i mean what actually changed, I forgot actually to mention this, was that 
in that time, I also had a car accident, which I should oh be my dead God. Yeah. now. So I should be dead. And I was so lucky. And I remember uh, my family thought I was dead because I was on the side of the road with the white sort of cloth over me. Oh, and shit. they turned up and they were like, this is it. And yeah. uh, it was that point. That's when I decided enough's enough. I need to just follow what I want now in life because life is too short. And like Definitely. you said, it makes you realise, you know, we're, we're working so much all the time, health problems, things that yeah. come. Obviously, it's not easy for some people. Life isn't easy, but sometimes you've got to make the right choices for you at that time in your life. Yeah. And kudos to you, mate, for like coming out, you know, like a lot stronger in that and doing what you want to do. Because, yeah, you know, it's, you know it's, that's fucking mad respect for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I'm, 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 I'm not pleased it happened. But it made me who I am today, which is yeah, cool. yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? You kind, of, you kind of, it showed you a different route of where you want to go. Yeah, yeah, you know I mean? exactly. That's the best exactly way to look at it. I think, yeah. Um, so yeah. Going, going back to like um, being a garage MC and a drum and bass MC, I kind of, I, I want to get in the mindset of an MC. So um, you said about writing lyrics for garage and writing lyrics for drum and bass. What would, yeah. what would you say would be the difference between the two? Obviously, I know there's a different speed of BPM and things like that, but like lyrically for an MC, what would be the difference be? It's more sort of garage, more sort of at the time when I was writing at the very, very beginning when I was like 15. Mm -hmm. It's more sort of half time blower. But then obviously, as things come forward, I just sort of started spinning up a little bit with stuff getting into yeah. like tongue rollers and, yeah, you yeah. know, um, being clever with sort of words. Um, and things like that and just trying to sort of beat match with lyrics um but obviously makes sense but i also like to write you know make it relatable to the listener so when people sort of listen to lyrics and stuff i, I write about what i see what i hear what i feel um and, and what's going on around me with my mates like in the world in general um you know it can be it can be good and bad but i, I mainly try and be positive with lyrics yep. i don't really swear either in lyrics um I know, you know, some people do, that's up to them, whatever, but mm -hmm. I try to keep everything sort of low on that. Um, yeah. But there's 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 so much to sort of talk about, um, and it's just, yeah, with the garage thing, it was more for me, yeah, it's more sort of like half the time, and then obviously drum and bass then became my love. You know, I yeah, sort yeah. of, I love garage, don't get me wrong, but that's where I sort of got drawn to and sort of just carried on with that really. Everybody loves a bit of garage, doesn't they? It's a part of everyone's <laughs> British like grow up, growing up in it. It is literally, <laughs> literally. So, with um, uh, writing your lyrics, then how was your first ever lyrics that you wrote? Like, because it's like I mean, I produced music uh, for years, and you compare like your your first track that you produced to like the one <laughs> you're current. So, what was it like? You know, from now to back then, was you reading it thinking that really doesn't go, or that's really good? Like, yeah. I was 15, so I was like, yeah, it was more sort of, I don't know, I, I, do you know what I found them? I found them about, right. just, I think it was during COVID, um, but I was just like, yeah, it, uh, reading it, I was just a bit like, it's all right, you, know, you can tell <laughs> I was 15 writing it, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But it yeah. wasn't bad, it was all right. I mean, I used to go around my mate's house party, and they'd be like, oh, get on the mic, get on the mic. And then you just pop off and then the whole, you know, be like, hey, you know. Um, but yeah, very different to lyrics now, which is, but I think that's a, a progression thing as an MC, especially as you're older and you get older, um, you, you sort of, mind changes, things change in general, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. so, it, but it's, it was funny to read back and see them and be like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't uh, spit any of them now, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I laugh because like we are our own worst critics and we like when it comes Literally. to our own work and like you're looking, you can, uh, like I said, I look at some of my tracks, I listen to it, back then I thought, oh man, this is banging. And I listen <laughs> yeah. to it now and I'm like, this is a fucking shit show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you got to start somewhere, though. Yeah, that's it. It's it's part of all about growing. You've got to go through the shit storm to you know kind of exactly kinda get it. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you got to make a hundred to make that one right one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I know so many producers as well. You know they say that, and you know, and I I got like, when I was producing a bit as well. Like I got like even like Ray said to me, Ray Keith, he was like, just don't stay on it too long. Like just just do it. 
Mm-hmm. And if it don't work, start again. Just or, or go to the next one. Go to the next one. Don't hang on to something too long. And I used to know so many producers that would literally spend days, oh, I'll do it tomorrow and fresh is. And then they come back and then they change this. And before you know it, they're like the tunes changed dramatically to yeah, something yeah, yeah. completely different. Yeah. Um, but it's just progression, isn't it, really? For sure, yeah. How was it like? <laughs> How is it when you um, did your uh, like your first, like I know you said if I heard you rightly you did uh, Brixton Academy thing but how was it when you first got up on stage in front of people like with the nerves and you wrote all these lyrics you built at that time like how how was it how did you navigate the nervousness or were you even nervous when you got like first up on stage in front of people? Well, the Brixton Academy one was more sort of like a massive room. There wasn't really like a stage. Yeah. Um. So it was more sort of personal. Yeah, but the first time I got up on stage, I remember feeling a bit sick with butterflies. Yeah, um, you know, you, you sort of like the Eminem eight bar thing, you know, where he's in the toilet and you're like, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> what are people going to think? Yeah, Do you know what I mean. But then when you see the crowd's reaction, it yeah. just goes, it yeah, just yeah. leaves you, and then you come off like you're buzzing and you're just like, yeah, you know. Um, even now though, I still get nervous sometimes now, but it's really weird. I get more nervous with more intimate gigs. Yep. and clubs than I do going out in um like for instance in massive crowds there was um there was one point in Austria I was playing with Pipe and Hazard and uh, I was absolutely knackered because I think I'd just come from Slovakia or something and <laughs> I had no sleep and I got there and there was these dressing rooms and I was like I'm just gonna have a little cheeky kick so I sort of just got, it was like literally around the back of the stage. Yeah, yeah. And I just remember just sort of going to sleep. And I all I heard was, Miss Melody, Miss Melody, where is she? And I was like, oh, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I sort of, and she goes, oh, um, Kevin Hype wants to speak to you. And I was like, I'd, I'd had, I don't know if I'd met him. I'm trying to think, because I played that with Rome with him. I think that was after. So I had, no, I hadn't met him anyway. I remember running out onto the stage and I remember running out and being like, wow, there was thousands and thousands of people there. Yeah. And I look, I was looking for my mic and I just felt this kick up my backside, not hard. Yeah. And I turned around and it was hype. And he goes, you bloody sod. And I was like, what, what? And he goes, they told me that you weren't coming and that they'd got another MC. And he was going, no, 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 blah, blah, blah. And uh, I was cracking up. But then... I'd literally just woken up and he was like, right, we're going on five minutes. Yeah. And I was just like, boom, okay, let's go. Do you know what I mean? Let's, let's get on with it sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it was really weird. But then I get booked with, like like I said, more intimate stuff. And I'm like, it's more sort of, I don't get nervous, nervous or anything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. It's more of a butterfly sort of, because the crowd's obviously, more it's engaged. just a different vibe. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly that. Yeah, I, I, it's the same with uh, uh, with DJing. Um, I, I, I assume you DJ because I see the decks. I've read that you DJ as well. Um, well, I I just started actually last okay. year. I did. I got booked for a festival to do a DJ live set with some of my own stuff and whatever. But I ha I am literally I'm new. I'm new to it, so I can mix house. Yeah, really good. Yeah, I'm not just saying it. Like, I'm not going to big myself up. Yeah, no. but drum and bass. Yeah. Drum and bass is a little bit sort of I'm still learning her. So I'm just yeah. practicing, practicing, practicing because I'd like to go out and do that as well. Hey, so do my own sets. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is, isn't it? You know, you just yeah, know the flow. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I, yeah. I, learned on, I learned on vinyl and uh, my mates. Yeah, I got them. Yeah, my mates were vinyl yeah. uh, DJs with drum and bass. And I first tried doing it and I was like, I can't <laughs> I can't slow it down quick enough or I can't speed it up quick <laughs> yeah. enough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they take um, some time getting used to. It. They do, but the sound though is so nice still from vinyl. Oh man, yeah, they, they sound so good. I, I think vinyl's coming back in now. Like a lot of people are seem to be buying it more, but it's not like one pound for a vinyl like it used to be. <laughs> no, yeah, no. I used to love that. I used to love Saturdays. Yeah. I used to hook up with a few mates, and we used to go into Brighton or London, and we'd go vinyl shopping. Yeah, and same, they'd be yeah. testing out all the all the test breasts and the white labels and you know certain like d- cutting dubs and stuff like that I used to absolutely yeah. love it yeah that's what we used to do when we were kids but your story kind of reminds me of mine like <clears throat> i say because I, I grew up on isla sheppey 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't like to promote it. <laughs> it's not the <laughs> nicest place, but yeah. And um, me, right. and my, me and my mates used to uh, um, throw like drum and bass events and stuff. And we used to find like fields and do it then. And this was back when we didn't have like smartphones. We had like Nokia 3310s, right? Yeah. So you're ringing yeah. up, you're like, where, where are you? Where are you? And you're driving around the country <laughs> roads and then you hear that like, it's music and you're like, oh, it's over there sort of thing. Yeah, you, know? you can yeah. hear it. That's it. Yeah, we used to do stuff yeah. like that. And um, yeah, just like my mates were MCs as well. And and uh, we, we used to have like this abandoned warehouse that we used to just claim a room in. And then we just throw loads of, um, you know, the egg trays. We just throw them up yeah. all around like that. Wicked. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like that kind of thing. So it just kind of just sort of uh, took me back a little bit when you mentioned Took you that. back a bit. Yeah, yeah, when you mentioned Yeah, I love that. it. Yeah. yeah. So with, a, with an MC then, like my friend, one of the buddies up back home, um, he had his own like mic, special mic. Are you the same with a mic as well? Do MCs have their own particular mic? I use I've used the Neve, um, and now recently I've just got the Shure better, and literally I'm in love with it. Really, eh? you because can really tell the difference, I think yeah? I think with my voice is a bit deeper. Um, it really works nice. It it really sort of it's like it sort of heats up. And then, you know, I'll, I'll just on for a few. And as the set goes on, the sound's yeah. just nicer. Um, so I'm not really fussy, um, with, but I do take my mic to to events. And oh, then, okay. yeah, I always carry my mic with me. Yeah. yeah. Not literally, not like shopping and things. <laughs> <laughs> you pull out your credit card, you're like, actually, no, sorry, yeah, I've right. got to pull out my mic. Yeah. <laughs> when, you're, when you're MC, um, do you, like... You, you kind of heavily rely on the DJ, obviously, right, and stuff like that. So, yeah. how does that work? In that, you know, if you're if you've never heard a, a DJ play, or if you get booked by a collective that want you to MC on their night, do you you have to like kind of like fastly adapt to their music, or kind of know, do what, you know what I do? Yeah, yeah. Right. Do you know what I do? I try and find a set that they've done. Yeah. Um, and listen to their style. Listen to what sort of tracks. You know, roughly. I mean, you can't go by that. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, with a lot of sets, I do host. Um, and then, obviously, just roll with lyrics in between, you know, obviously not over vocals and things like that. Um, but I think it's important for an MC to maybe do a bit of homework with the DJ if you haven't played with them. Yeah. Um, because just so you can listen to their style um, and see sort of what, unless you you know what they do, um, that's what I have always tend to to do really yeah okay i always wonder because when I, I see my like people when i see mcs i kind of think like you know like you're, you kind of have to think off your you know off the top of your head and be quick on your feet of like yeah. adapting to that environment right and stuff and, yeah and um I, I don't know if that's very difficult for an mc but it must be a very some some a talent that you've got to learn over time of Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. 100%. I mean, you learn it over. It's just progressing as an MC. And over yeah. time, you get to learn, you know, these sorts of things. And especially with festivals and clubs and then um, other events that you get booked for, different vibes, different sort of feels. And you just learn to grow with that um, yeah. as an MC. Um, and like I said, with the DJs and stuff as well, you just sort of get the... You, you, I always... You know, but the DJ's there to to sort of perform and play the music, and I try, tend to just roll with the DJ rather than I've seen it that MCs and the DJ they like fighting against each other, like not yeah, literally, yeah. but yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. with the music and the lyrics and stuff, and the DJ's looking at him thinking, "Just shut up," or you know, you, you know, just things like that. So I think that's really important as an MC, sort of when learn to know when to get the crowd hype learn when to know when to spit lyrics like i said oh yeah. don't you know vocals just leave it let it roll you know um and 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 interact with the crowd as well do you know what i mean they're there to have a good time mm -hmm. um and i think that's just a part of being an mc and growing yeah because if, if you think of like a proper like full-time singers i don't know like beyonce or um i don't know Ed sheeran or whatever right they yeah. they 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 have a team and they have that like sound all dialed down to a T, right? And when yeah, they do events. Yeah. And that's why I've got mad respect for MCs because they have to adapt to that environment on that event at that time. Uh, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. 
yeah, I, yeah. I just think it's just progression over years mm-hmm. that sort of you learn, um, and just over time, and then it just sort of comes naturally, really. That's wicked, yeah. And do and do your homework on a DJ that you haven't played with before. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> that all it always helps. It always helps. Not yeah. nec- not all the time because they might have changed their style, or but you get an idea of what you're going to get. So you yeah. you know you can just sort of accompany that. Yeah, and it goes. It goes. Kind of goes back to when you said about um, when you play for a smaller, a smaller venue. It's more like intimate. And you're more engaged with the crowds. Like I've, I've had you know, many people say to me, "If you're not nervous before a set, even though after all these years, you know, do you even enjoy it anymore? You know, when you're nervous, yeah. you, after all those years, you, you it shows your passion for it still, right? And yeah, that's, that's 100%. An amazing thing still. And I agree with like the smaller clubs because you're more like I say exposed in the sense of there's less people to you know pick things apart where you could go wrong as well as a, you know I'm not saying you do go wrong but do you know what I mean though like if anything does go wrong um, yeah you, you you're more exposed to it but you can also you're you're more engaged with the crowd and and that's the same with yeah. DJ and I, I think that's yeah, I can totally agree with what you said there about that yeah yeah it's more intimate it's more sort of I don't know why, because at these bigger festivals, there's more eyes on you. Yeah. But I think it's just the vibe, and like you said, it's more personal with this with the smaller event. Yeah. Um, but you just learn to sort of, again, you know, it's just going from different vibes to different sort of cultures and sort of yeah. just yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think it's, I think yeah, because it's a good thing to highlight because obviously there's a lot of people that watch this show that are like new into it and things like that, and you know everyone thinks that. Oh, the big crowds i want to play in front of big crowds and you know the start of small and all different varieties but you know a lot of the you know like the the bigger mcs like yourself and djs still get nervous around the smaller crowds do you know what i mean and i'm yeah. just trying to highlight that for people that that it doesn't matter what size venue it is even the smallest ones can still make you nervous and be like you know and that's normal kind of thing and do you know what i sometimes have more fun at the smaller ones yeah because yeah. You know, my first when I first got booked, I was playing in front of like 100, 200 people, things like that. But it's more personal, and then you grow sort of more of a. I don't know how to put it. It's really weird. You know, you get more people come up. You know, oh blah blah blah, and I used to DJ, and and then you'll see them somewhere else, and you get to sort of network with people more intimately. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always think that with DJs, and you know they sort of see these big events and they think, oh, you know, that's the sort of pinnacle. But I think you need to start, you've always got to start somewhere, wherever, whatever you do, DJ, MC, and, you know, sure, things yeah. like that. I, I think you just, you always need to start somewhere and just grow with it. Um, yeah. Because obviously things just come over time. Yeah. yeah. And that, that goes on to my next question, actually, is is uh, obviously touring around the world. And obviously, like you said, different cultures, different people, different size crowds. Like you've traveled a lot around the world. Um, yeah, I've read that you've done a lot of, 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 you know, a lot of countries and stuff. What countries have like stood out to you the most? That have enjoyed it, or the countries that most you, that you least expected would like that, or do you know what I mean? Like, um, funnily enough, in the yeah. middle of nowhere in Germany and things like that. Um, Oh, okay. They have been, and Slovakia, there's a few places out there, it's in the middle of nowhere, there's like a rail track that leads to nowhere, but you walk in and it is literally rano. Um wow. And the vibes are just absolutely unreal. Um, and they're sort of places that you'd think, if it was in England, you'd sort of, but then I think as the roads have evolved in England, that's what they sort of like, Bagley's and stuff, you know, I never got to go there. But I heard all these stories about it, and you know, you see the pictures, sort of warehouses, middle of nowhere. That's sort mm-hmm. of where it it's like that now in Europe. Not so much in the more city parts, but sort of out in the middle of nowhere. But they are just the best vibes. Um, yeah, definitely Germany has been one of them. Slovakia, um, I, I, and you don't expect it. You get there and think, oh, you know, it's going to be just like maybe I don't know, so many people. But it's really cool because you know you get to still meet new people and you know the cultures and you know experience things and then you get there and you get in there and you're like wow this is <laughs> yeah wow um and this is popping like this is wicked um and you don't expect it so for me traveling 
sometimes they are the best ones. Um, obviously, I know like a, oh, it goes it takes me back to early like with the big festivals, and they're they're really cool to play. Don't get me wrong. Um, and obviously, I'm grateful for just sort of every booking and you know things like that and mm. meeting new people and it's always exciting. But it's yeah, for me, they've been the ones that have stood out. Um, it's the sort of ones in the middle of nowhere when you just least expect what's sort of going to happen. Yeah, that's cool to hear actually, especially like in <laughs> Slovakia. I didn't know like it was a thing out there. And yeah, yeah, I mean, it's weird because you don't expect. Like you said, because it's in the middle of nowhere, you don't expect there to be such a big sort of drum and bass community there. Yeah. You sort of, like I said, you you expect, oh, maybe, you know, you, it's just the unknown. You sort of walk in, yeah, you don't yeah, quite know what you're yeah. going to get. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is better, but it's really cool because, like I said, sometimes you just get there and you're like, wow, I can't believe this is going on here, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it's great. It's really great. And the people are so lovely as well. Um, they're really welcoming. Um, I've had such a great time with with you know going out to these places and meeting these people and yeah it's just it's just great really you know I think that's the beauty of just uh, the the whole like electronic music community in it it just sort of like you know it gets you away from the bullshit in the world and you kind of just yeah like, you know what I mean like it's yeah and that's, exactly you know and what was your first ever international booking you you did. Uh, Ibiza. Ibiza. Yeah. Do you know what? The first night I went out there, yeah. there was there was these MCs. I was in S Paradise. I was actually okay. there on on a vacation before. Yeah. And I got talking to a promoter sort of out there, and he said, "Come along to this event." And that he said, "I'll I'll I'll, I'll pay you for it or whatever, but I just want to see what the reaction was." Mm -hmm. So I went there, and there was these MCs, and they wouldn't let me get on the mic. And I thought, this is really weird. I've never had that before. And one of the MCs was like, yeah, well, I'm x Man's cousin and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, cool. Do you know what I mean? Like, cool. Yeah, good for you, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. and then he said, he was like, they just wouldn't let me on the mic. And the, the promoter had to come over. Anyway, I got on the mic, done my set. And they yeah. got then after my set, they got back on the mic. Anyway, group group third up, group rider. And literally within two minutes, he just went bonk and he pulled out their microphone. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> um, and that was that. That was that. Yeah. Um, so that was my first. It was brilliant because um, I don't know if you've been to Ibiza. I haven't yet. No. And I know it sounds mad, <laughs> but I haven't yet. <laughs> yeah. So it, obviously now it's more popular. But back then there was only like the odd drum and bass event and they were yeah. just starting to get sort of like international people sort of over from different places and things like that. So it was all still relatively not new because um, it was going on, but not like it is now. Yeah. Um, but it, that was quite, that was quite cool. So that was my first sort of book in abroad. Um, yeah. Which was weird really, but it's, yeah, it was, it was cool. It sort of led on to other things. So, at least you got on the mic and just smashed it and showed them boys off what. Do you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Do you know what? I actually <laughs> bet him 20 euros that I could MC. And I oh, really? Because he, yeah, because he wouldn't let me on the mic. Did he pay up? And then? I was like, yeah, yeah, he did. Because oh, I, right, I said to yeah, him, yeah. I said to him, he wasn't going to, but I was like, come yes. on, deal's a deal. You know? <laughs> but that was interesting. So, I had a laugh at the same time. So, it was good. Oh, wicked. I haven't been a bit as mad as it sounds. I haven't been yet. My missus has. <laughs> I haven't done it yet. But yeah. I think we're going to do it one day. Whereabouts um, have you travelled? What's the farthest like place you've travelled? Like the furthest place to like do a gig? So far, um, I'm trying to think. Well, this year is going to be my furthest. I'm yep. doing a tour in Asia. Wow. Uh, and then I'm having to go to America and then to South America. Yeah. Um, with and then July, I'm in talks with a promoter going to China, so we're going to Beijing, Singapore, and doing that side of Asia. And so yeah. that will be my to date. Um, yeah, it will be my furthest gigs, but, now. Yeah, yeah. But before that, um, more sort of just sort of, um, uh, just trying to think to pay those, mate. Um, Europe, not Europe, but sort of, I've done 
Greece and Slovakia or Germany. It, it, they're still relatively still close. So I'd say, yeah, my bookings coming up are going to be my, yeah, furthest okay. bookings, I'd say. That's cool. I wonder how they are with Asia tour. Like the the crowd will like be. Do you know what I mean? Because I've never. Yeah. I've yeah, never it, heard. I mean, I'm intrigued. Yeah, it's it, it's weird. I think when I'm going out, I'm actually playing in Bangkok on the Thai New Year, and they they've got like a Solanki. I think it was. I don't know. Maybe I've not said that right, but they've got a water festival. Right. Um, and it's absolutely massive, and I'm actually playing at that the the, the massive water festival thing in Bangkok. Nice. And they they do with the events, so that's really cool. Managed to, you know, um, I'm looking forward to doing that. So, um, but I I see that Thailand and stuff is just getting bigger with more international artists. Yeah, yeah. Over since COVID and stuff, um, I noticed that yeah, it's definitely sort of growing out there. Um, and again, sometimes you know, like I was just saying to you before. It's the unknown. It's like not knowing what to expect. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then it sort of being like, oh, wow, this is cool. Or, do you know what I mean? So I think that's all to come with me um, in the next few weeks. It's going to be. And Vietnam as well, actually. I'm out there. Oh, wow. Um, so that will be really cool. I'm looking forward to that. But again, it's like, I wonder what it's going to be like. And, yeah, yeah, you know, sort of that sort of feeling. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That's really interesting. Because you don't hear this side. Of, a lot of people don't hear this side of like, all the, I would say, like the logistics behind uh, doing, like you know, touring and things like that, right? Like, how do you organize all this, right, with your your personal life, family life, and just you know, not picking certain areas? And do you know what I mean? Like, how do you? What's the logistics behind that? I don't even know. It's tiring, but yeah. the thing is, I've always tried since the car accident. I've always tried to have a good balance in life. Yeah. Um. I as if you can. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. Yeah. Life's just you've got no anyway. choice. Life yeah. just hates it. Yeah. Um. But I always yeah. So with my agent and like my um manager and things like that, we just try and pace it a bit. So for instance, with this Asia tour, I'm gonna have like five days in between, um, to sort of chill, see areas and do things sort of I I want to go and see um mm-hmm. on my own time and and give myself a little bit of chill. But um, I mean before COVID, I think I was getting in more planes than cars and it was just mental and i remember but um like i was just saying to you earlier like sometimes like you just don't you get so you get to the airport time you get there i mean you'd have dinner go to the gig get back freshen up yeah sorry go back freshen up go to the gig literally go to bed at four or five in the morning then you're getting picked up by the promoter at 7 a.m to go to the airport and mm-hmm. then you're having to fly somewhere else to another gig um so you're literally having about two three four hours sleep max and maybe half hour kip on the plane or something like that um, and it does it does get a lot but yeah. i think you try and just you know deal with with it and yeah, just sort yeah. of try and um in other areas when you just get the chance when you can to sleep <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, I know you're saying, yeah i've got, I've got I, yeah it, it's it's like um I'm glad you, you kind of you brought that up because you know uh, I think in today's world now with musicians, DJs, MCs, producers, you know, like um, the whole looking after yourself things kind of really picking up now in it. As I'm not saying it's a trend, but it is being more noticeable now. Like people, yeah, definitely. You know, like when you do a gig, you're like, oh, I need two days to sort of because all these late nights does catch up after a while, right? And, oh, hundred you know, percent. And it also on your mental health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because the less sleep you have, you're running yeah. on empty. Yeah. And you sort of, you know, things like that. It sort of, yeah, it does take it out of you, and it can drain you, and it can do things to you, your health as well. So yeah. it's just trying to sort of, like you were just saying, and just get what you can when you can, and then have that little few days or break just to keep away and just concentrate on you eat good um sleep and yeah because that's another thing with on the road you don't get to eat great things all the time like because you because you're traveling so much and that can also take an effect um and your moods not your moods like i'm quite happy you're lucky you know like that sort of whatever yeah but sometimes it can and and i remember coming back i asked her like i had three gigs friday saturday and sunday um, I had about six hours sleep the whole weekend and I got back and you just feel like 
you just want some proper food and you know yeah cause you just don't you just got to grab and go because you yeah, just yeah. like da, 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 da. but i think that's really important for people that you need to try and you know um keep a try and keep a balance in your life if if you can and when you can i think yeah. it's really important no it's a good thing to highlight i think you know, it's because i think every every in this day and age now everyone's running at 100 mile an hour all the time just yeah picking yeah. up this picking up that, doing this doing that me myself I, I i do it but i try to allocate things and just like yourself learn to sort of just take some time and you know like that uh organize things accordingly that you know where you've got time for yourself and that yeah and um but one question i do want to ask is uh what advice would you give to like new mcs coming up or new DJs, producers, or anyone in the electronic music scene, what advice would you give them, you know, that are just starting out and want to break out with the whole social media stuff and the current world that we're living in now with social media and trying to stay relevant and stuff? Like, what advice would you give? It's really hard because I've noticed since COVID, there's more DJs, there's more MCs, and I've spoken to people that have been, you know, sort of trying to break through and trying to come through. And they're like, oh, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's always been hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was coming through, there was no female MCs. Um, there was maybe Tarly, sorry, and Lady MC. There yep. was no lyrical female MC. And that's where I tried to break the mold um, and and be me, uh, but be unique, be different and persist on yep. keep going. Just keep going. You're going to get sidetracked. You're going to have days where, you know, it gets on top of you. You know, there's going to be days where you look on social media and go, oh, you know, and I think especially with younger people, social media can be a massive effect on people's mental health. And also yeah. I think you need a, you need a balance. Again, goes back to that. You need to sort of do you, don't keep watching what everyone else is doing because that can really affect your mental health, um, especially with COVID and after that. And now with the whole, you know, DJs and he, she's a DJ and, um, you know, they want to be an MC. And I think people get put off quite easily. So that would be my advice to people is that you've just got to keep going, um, stay determined, be different, but mm -hmm. be you, but be unique. And don't ever change yourself um, but for anyone. Yeah, you know, just, just be because, relevant, yeah. But, and also I find that with MCs, they, they sort of jump on, oh, that's really popular, that sort of style. You know, like they're, they're, at the minute, there's the grime sort of style of MCing and stuff, which is great, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then you, you'll get MCs that will try and copy or, or jump on stuff. Just be you. Just be you. Do you. Um, and you never know. Things come back round. Um, yeah. It's like the it's like the MC now. Um, it's gone like 360. You sort of, in 92, 93, you got GQs and you sort of host MCs and things like that. And now... For the bigger events, they they sort of want the the host MC, not so much yeah. the lyrical MCs and stuff. Obviously, Bar X Man and you know legends like that. So, um, I think for MCs, it's really important and you know just to do you and don't be put off and just keep going. No, it's wicked advice, mate. Because I think, like I say, I, I bring this up a lot because I I I'm, I was a bit of a sucker to it. To be fair, like when it comes to even back in like fucking 2015 when I was producing, I'd be comparing myself to big people, you know, as I was just starting, you know, sort of coming up, yeah. like you know, selling records and stuff. And it, you, and then it, it, you don't want to do it because you kind of just look at them people and you're like, I'm never going to be that big. I'm not, and even now I sometimes still do it, but now, you know, my missus said to me, I'm follow them people and just stay in your lane and do what you do. And other yeah. people have advised that. And I think what you've like, you've said there is, is, massive massive advice because people do compare themselves a lot on you know with what their talent is compared to other people and like you say staying relevant oh my 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 thing isn't working but their thing's working so i need to do what they're doing yeah and, and yeah, that's, i think you know what i mean yeah especially for the kids coming through now because you've got tiktok facebook instagram bread this 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 and it's like yeah. even me now trying to keep up with social media it eats up so much time but at the same time it's you've got to have balance yeah. And like you, a very good point you just made as well. You know, they see, oh, but they're getting like, I, I mean, the other day I had two school kids and she said, the, one of the little girls, they were 11. And she said, I'm more popular than you because I've got more likes or I've got more following. Yeah. And I'm like, 
it's crazy, you know, and, and kids look at this and they look at what they're doing and, oh, but why aren't I getting that? Why yeah. am I not getting to that place? They were yeah. MCs and DJs. Why am I not like yeah. that? I'm just as good. And they doubt themselves and they shouldn't. They really shouldn't yeah. doubt themselves. They just need to just come off social media for a few mm. days and just have a, a balance with it and just, just don't keep watching everyone else. Just do what you're doing. Because yeah. if you carry on with something, persistence and dedication someday somewhere something's going to happen and it it won't happen when you expect it it will happen when you least expect it it was a bit like me when i was coming through um like i said there was no sort of female mcs and i wanted to break the mold Mm -hmm. but they they were always sort of letting you through and stuff and then i i remember doing these videos and stuff and my social media i woke up one day and my social media started going off when it was fantasy and he was like, I've just seen your video. Can you contact me ASAP? Blah, 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 blah. Wow. And I was like, okay, this is a bit mad. Um, and anyway, sort of as things time went on, he was like, right, I want you to join this agency and I want you to do this and blah, 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 and speak to that agent and this is now your manager and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I was going on and then he was like, so what they did to me, they said, right, we've got this rave. It's at the uh, O2 or something, Skibbity's Bash or whatever it is. We want you to MC on stage with as a grimer, shotter, shabba, skibber, wow. and someone else. And I was like, Crazy. okay, and we want to see. We're going to stand at the back of the room, they said, and we want to see how loud you are and how clear and this and that. And I was like, okay. So I did it and I got the crowd going and stuff, and it was really cool. The MCs were really nice. They were working with me and stuff like that. Nice. Um, and then you get a few saying, yeah, you know, you're wicked in that fantasy. was like, but you weren't loud enough. You need to be a bit louder. You need to project your voice and stuff. So I was like, okay, cool. And again, it's like learning. I mean, I just sort of got put on the spot with it and sort of like just voice tried training to roll kind with of it. Thing? It's more power. Obviously, yeah. Skibbity's like, was, sorry, um, Iron Love. So like, you know, you could hear Skibbity from outside, obviously yeah, yeah. over years. Um, and that's the thing with your voice, I think, at an MC. Um, it can sort of, the more gigs you get, it can deteriorate. Uh, and then you've got to take. Got, I I suffered a bit with vocal, you know, strained like strained vocals and stuff like that because okay. I was doing so many gigs, and at a time it was just really taking a toll. And then they would say to me, right, well, we want you to do a tune on Monday, and you just have three gigs at the weekend, and you're like, my boy, you'd be like, you know, <laughs> yeah, like kind of going back to what you said, Draining. balance, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah, um, and then. With the, you know, going back to your question and stuff, I, I, yeah, I just feel that, you know, for me coming through, it was hard, really hard because there wasn't a female, no, there was no female, like, you know, lyrically and yes, things yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. So, but that gave me more determination to push and to kick the door down and say, right, now I am going to do this and I'm going to keep going. And yeah. then I was so lucky. I mean, I ended up on tours with Skibber and Shabba and Shotter and, Wow, you know, warming up for SASAS, nice. playing out with hype and hazard at weekends and all the different, like, storm. All, but the thing is with me, what I kept was, I was a bit, I'm like a bit of a 360 MC, so I can go and host sets. You know, I can play with, I played with, uh, like, the Upbeats and Chris Sue's and, like, that sort of neuro-funky type. Then I'd be in Belgium doing jump-up sets. Then I'd be out doing sort of liquidy set. You know, then I'd be out doing jungle sets, um, mm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they all sort of led to different paths. So I'd be doing one week, I'd be doing this sort of style, then I'd be doing that sort of style. Um, and it was really cool because, again, different places, different people. And then I get to hear like their stories. So when I was talking to DJ Storm, and she was like, How are you getting on? We're in, we're in the middle of Italy. And uh, there was Baseline Smith um, and Storm and others and stuff there, and Metric and that. And she was like, How are you getting on? And I was like, yeah, it's, it's tough, but you've just got to keep going. And then I heard yeah. her story with chemistry and how, you know, with the whole them coming through, and it was really inspiring to hear, you That's know, and job. that urged me more to keep going as an M- MC because, you know, um, and just grateful that I just stuck at it and kept going, really. Yeah, I, I think your story is absolutely amazing about you've how you've come through it. Uh, I like the Alpha story. Like, let me get on the mic and prove to you. I can do it. <laughs> and uh, you know, and it's like um, on this podcast, I like to give everyone whether they're they're famous, they're not famous, people on all levels. That's why I like to 
interview different kind of people out. yeah and i think yeah. like you know you're and that's why i like interviewing people like that because your experience might benefit someone else you know there might be other female male mcs that are coming in that be like oh miss melody the way she done it you know that that's that's it's inspiring for me like you say like you know other people inspired you and uh i think what you've highlighted there is that absolutely am, like, is, is amazing because like i say this with social media so many people like compare themselves and like i say they if you stay on your th- your thing in your lane but your inspiration could drive that person's thing. yeah so your story sorry yeah. so yeah i think that's a, a wicked wicked thing and like I went on a little bit onto branding because obviously I, I hear a lot of people say like branding is your thing and we kind of brushed up on it with regards to um, standing your lane and like you explained earlier. So how do, how do you like brand yourself to make yourself th- th- that brand, if you know what I mean? Because kind of every DJ has to have their own brand to promote it, market it and things like that. Excuse me. I think, I think with... It's just trying to be you, but be unique and also be different. Like I was saying to you before, yeah, yeah, yeah. with with like my my voice again. I, you know, as I said earlier, it's a little bit deeper. Um, and I used to get mocked for it as well. I used to get mocked. Oh, you sound like a man. Or you sound like this. You sound like that. But I can't help the way I sound. Um, yeah. And I think that's just over time with gigs as well. It's taken a bit of a toll. You know, recording tracks and things like that. But I think when you, for instance, when you look at pioneers death skibbity you know fearless as soon as they open their mouth you know it's them for sure yeah. you could be at the bar with your back turned buying a beer or whatever as a raver and as soon as skibber comes on you know it's skibber when shabba comes on you know it's shabba same with death fearless you know the pioneers of, of sort of navigator yeah. and other people you know icy free you know it's them and i think being an mc having your own sound you know, and and an X male and things. You know, you you know it's them as soon as they open them up. I mean, it's a bit like the whole Michael Jackson thing. You know, the first four bars, you know, that's a Michael Jackson track. For sure, it's the yeah. same as being a producer. The first, it is normally the first four bars. You know what track that is, Chase and Status, whatever. You know, because they've got that sound. And I think that's really important as an artist is to have your own sound. You know, um, and and just be you. Um, and don't try and jump on everyone else, it's like we were saying earlier, uh, and brand brand yourself so that you're different. You know, just I think people worry too much in this day and age of what they look like. I mean, I've been, re- people have been, when I first started coming out, people, some people online would get really nasty. And I know I've seen it happen to other artists, but you've just got to brush that off and just be like, well, you know, there was artists. I mean, I was putting out these videos and there was artists and MCs playing at these roads, sharing and commenting and stuff, saying, oh, she looks like this, she looks like that. You know, she doesn't fit our thing. And I'm like, but it shouldn't be like that. It's not a sex thing. You know, I thought, you know, especially with how things have progressed, it shouldn't be like, a, a, you know, this sort of sex appeal and things like that. I think, you know, but it sometimes is in certain music. And I, you know, I do see that. But I think with now with people is there's a lot more pressure on artists but with the branding, like, don't be scared to be you, you know, just because you dress a certain way, just because you talk a certain way, just because you are, you know, what you are, it doesn't, doesn't matter. That's you. And there, there's no, there, there's no one else like you, you know, so embrace that. Yeah, I think I agree. Cause I think if you, you know, if your talent shines, people will recognize you for your talent, you know, hundred percent. and then yeah. that's what it's all about. Like I listen to Rogan and Rogan's like saying, I don't even read comments. It's like it's a bullshit it's no area. Point. There's no yeah. point because it doesn't reflect yeah. on what you do. He said, "He said I just feel sorry for them people that they take the time out of their day to say that negative shit when you don't need to." Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, but exactly, exactly it, that. You know, and um, I, I want to ask you with about drum and bass as a general. Obviously, from when we were younger, drum and bass. Um, I mean, I'm 34, but back then like you say it was an underground thing i remember getting the innovation cds when i was younger and the drum and bass arena cds and tapes you know when i was a kid um but how do you think it's been now uh drum and bass as a genre and jungle and things like that like um how do you think it is now in 2024 like, it's it was very different then? yeah very different i was like, i go get in the car go on radio one or and there's drum and bass playing and i'm like yeah. wow 
Do you know what I mean? Considering I had to listen to tape backs to hear the newest tunes coming out. So now I'm getting in my car and there's someone playing a drum and bass track on Radio 1, um, which is amazing. It's, you know, it's evolved so much. And I think it's also opened doors to more artists, more producers, um, more MCs on tracks, which is great because that wasn't so much a, a thing. It was, but not like it is now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think it, it's just good because it's, I think if something doesn't evolve, it dies. Yeah. And drum and bass will never die. No. But everything has to evolve. Um, that's just life. Yeah. Um, and I think it also opens more doors for people. Um, and, and the same, you know, you've still got the underground, you know, side of it. Very you've true, still got, yeah. you've got, yeah, you've yeah. got the commercial side of it. You've got all these different more genres of drum and bass now than you ever had. Um, obviously at the beginning it was jungle. Um, and then it was sort of, then it was drum and bass sort of 96, 97 just started to, I mean, I was really young and not listening to drum and bass sort of then. Yeah. Um, you know, um, so, but I actually grew up in jungle. And because my sister was like 11 years older than me, she was going to the raves and stuff. She was, um, you know, a lot older than me. And I remember she had this Jungle Mania CD and it had like all the classics and stuff. And I'd be like, oh my God, like I was six, seven years old. And I was yeah. like, what is this music? I love this. And I remember just like nicking her CD and just wanting to play all the Jungle tracks full blast. And then when you get a bit older, I was like 12, 13, got myself like a bigger sound system big speakers and then just yeah. bumping it, you know, and then yeah. just sort of going through it. And then it, and then obviously high school, like I said earlier, went to the tape packs. And, and I think now drum and bass is just huge. It's just yeah, really I've, blown up. I've spoke to people here and they, because uh, obviously you get a lot of people from Australia over in, in here in Vancouver and stuff. And they say like in New Zealand and Australia, drum and bass is massive now. Like it's yeah, like the, one of the main genres now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm used to, this is to drum and bass in a small pub club thing yeah, back in yeah. like, you know, the 2000s, you know? So, yeah, back in the day. <laughs> yeah, back, yeah, show me the age here now, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it is, it yeah. is like that. Um, yeah. But it's great, you know, you it's really good for artists coming through. And like I said, you've still got the underground scene, you've still got your pioneers. You you know, just because I think people were saying, yeah, but they're not like doing this, but, but they're pioneers. They've done this since they dot. They still do. They yeah, are, they've got the you know, due res- they've got, yeah. yeah, you know, they are, they've earned the respect. They don't need to say, you know, oh, you know. So I yeah. think everything is sort of just, yeah, it, it's just really come together sort of quite nicely. But again, you've got the whole aspect of jungle, jump up, this, that, more yeah, commercially yeah. sort of stuff, you know, and things like that. So I think, I think, yeah, because drama, drama bass here now has picked up so big. There's a guy, yeah, um, his name's Koji Aiken, and he's just he's he talks to me all the time. He's like, mate, I need to go to the UK to listen to drum and bass, and he's going to go. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, man. There's there's plenty of people I'm like, you know, um, that I could hook you up with that can take you to gigs or whatever, and you can go with uh, friends and that. And um, he's 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 built up like eighty thousand followers just from wow. like, playing drum and bass tracks that he likes and dancing to them on social media. Wow. And he produces it. And I'm like, mate, fair play. It's grown. He's blown up in a year on it. And I'm like, like, you know, and he's he's a Canadian guy. And I said to him, uh, you know, like, um, you producing stuff? He's like, Yeah, yeah, I'm getting I'm you know, he said, I've been producing for years, but drum and bass, he said, I absolutely love it. And we've we fire tunes to each other. Like I show him like the Nikki Black Market years of ninety seven with Shabs and then people like that back in the day. And he's like, yeah. this is wicked. It sounds like the quality sounds really bad because it's it back then. Yeah. You know, but yeah. like, it's been pulled off a tape. But I said, this is like, <laughs> for me, this is like cool, you know, like it, it still yeah. is, but like this is my, my type, like, you know, my, yeah, a young era, kid coming yeah. Up. yeah. And he's like, wow, man. He's like, yeah. He said, um, so I don't even like that liquid stuff. I just like the jungle and the jump up and that. And I'm like, oh, yeah. He's like, yeah, it's just so like dirty and like proper yeah, grimy. Yeah. And I'm, and and it's nice to see that coming from the UK that where, you know, over here people are, are finding that music, you know, and finding people like yourself and, you know, all the all the pioneers like you mentioned, you know, um, uh, over here like in a you know, across the world like to actually see it in real life, you know, you hear people yeah obviously, yeah exactly yeah but to actually see people like so inspired by it and they're loving it and they're like growing their platform from that 
yeah and it kind of goes back to like you say where it's expanding you know and you're traveling around the world and it's, it's amazing yeah. like to see yeah and more people are hearing it and more yeah. it's more yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, it's amazing. Wicked. Um, is there anything else you'd like to brush up on? Is there anything you want to share, future plans for yourself or, you know, what's coming up? I know we obviously mentioned that it's some of your touring, but anything new coming up? Um, I've got a load of releases coming out. Nice. Um, I've just linked up with a producer um, that was very well known in the scene um, and sort of gone by a different name now. So just working with them and I'm working with a live drum and bass project. Um, we go out and perform all our own tracks. We're called Sakura Live. Nice. So um, the last year and a half, we've been doing that um, as well, on top of obviously my own stuff and whatever. Um, so yeah, just just that's probably about it, really. Um, all that from, you can reveal. <laughs> yeah, 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 at the minute, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got some tracks that they're going to be coming out on Etheria Records, um, which is a new label um, that we're going to be launching in April. Um, and we're going to have a launch event with We're Called Sakura Live. We've got that at the end of June, um, 29th of June in Brighton at the Volks. So that's going to be really cool. Um, nice. And, and yeah, that's sort of where where I'm at, really, working with some producers and tracks and, yeah, trying to follow through on some things. And, yeah. Cool. I, I, I love hearing people do really well. Um, I'm glad I got to speak to you as well. I know, like, it was yeah, just no, Thank you for having me. I know it's just off a comment of, but I was like, yeah, that didn't just try it out. I was like, because that's like an old school track when you was with like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. with Marvelous Kane. I was like, mate, that's picking my brains. I've got a comment. I'm like, I don't normally yeah. comment. I'm like, but I've got uh, this song. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. No, so, thank uh, you for having me. I really appreciate you asking me to come and do it. So no, you. I mean, you're my first MC. So like, it's, <laughs> I mean, I keep it, I, I, don't, I don't like to, I, I, interview people that are sound engineers um event planners and you know um drink people you know hospitality people i like to interview everyone because that's what it is right it's a collective of everyone to make the night it's not just a dj yeah. and the, you know, yeah. it's, and it's everyone right and that's why i like to hear yeah. these different stories and and even i've got buddies that are mcs i've never asked them the questions i've asked you like what's the mindset of an mc how do you you know build this sort of like uh you know your lyrics and working working with other djs and stuff but it's been great to hear your insight on all that and i, I thank you thank you very much for your time on that oh no problem thank you for having me up i've enjoyed it it's been good <laughs> <laughs>